Yay, we're doing a part two. What is up my beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. It's Queera and I am so happy to see you. If you are new to my channel, this is a video series I do called Ask Queera where basically you the queers ask me, also a queer, questions and I give you advice, or at least I try to. This is a part two to answering WLW relationship questions. So if you haven't seen the first part, you can watch it after this video. It doesn't have to be in chronological order. My hair is flat today, please ignore. And if you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and this is my partner and I's Patreon, where we have like exclusive videos, photos, unreleased TikToks, unreleased YouTube videos, and we're actually starting a little podcast on there. That's only going to be released on Patreon for my lovely patrons so if you want to listen to that make sure you go subscribe to the besties tier these questions were all taken from my Instagram thank you to everyone who submitted questions that's about it let's just get into the questions <sighs> the universe is like speaking through me right now so this is a great time to film this video <laughs> first question me and my partner haven't done anything that isn't over our clothes, also no hands. It's the first sexual relationship I've been in and I'm just so confused about it. Is it a common thing? And how do I see if they want to do more? Oh honey, you are so cute and pure. Ah! First of all, congrats. It's very, that's a very exciting place to be in. Of course it's a common thing, like you do it when you're ready. You do it when you're ready. And if people are trying to pressure you, it's your own damn life. It's not their life. My best advice is obviously always to communicate with your partner. Ask them if going further is something that they would want to do. Ask yourself if it's something you want to do. Make sure you put yourself first. You know, when you're making out, like maybe you can um, ask the question then, be like, is this okay if I touch you there? I've done that before and it works pretty well. Obviously you want to get their consent first before you do anything. And yeah, like there's no amount of time where like you have to start having sex in relationships. Like it's literally, it all just depends on your relationship. Like every relationship is so different. And especially if you're new to it, like obviously, yeah, of course it can take time. Did being in a relationship make it easier slash harder to figure out your gender identity? Personally, it made it easier, but that's just because my partner was also going through a gender journey as well, like kind of at the same time as mine or like a little bit before. And when they started questioning their gender identity, I started to question mine. In a way, like with Lauren, my partner going through their own gender journey, it gave me permission to be like, wait, I can do that too. I can question my gender. I can discover more about myself, why not? And I think it'll help you too, as long as your partner is receptive to it and open and willing to talk about it with you and you know they won't judge you for it it will be a great bonding experience because they will just get to be there for you every step of the way I'm a woman dating a woman for the first time second date tonight how do you not rush into things that's a good question for the queen of rushing into things. No, I'm joking. I have been known to be a bit of a U-Haul, okay? Like, I am not the expert on this. But with me, it's all about vibes. Like, I feel like I never rush into things. I feel out the vibe, and if the time is right, the time is right, you gotta just like listen to your gut feeling. I follow that instinct, and even if it seems too soon, or like even if it's early for some people to like move on to the next level, for me in the past, it's been the right thing to do. But obviously I get like you can't do that with everyone, especially like if you're dating and seeing a few people. Well, you have to set boundaries for yourself. You have to know like what, you're comfortable doing on the second date if the girl you're seeing makes a move on you and you're just not ready for it like literally be like i want to in the future but right now let's just make out or you know let's just do xyz this obviously already passed because like i got these questions a while ago let me know how it went you can dm me Ooh, this is okay this is a good one what's something you wish you would have known when you got into your first queer relationship in a way, I think when I got into my first queer relationship, I was very quick to make excuses for certain things that my 
partner did, my ex-partner, there were some red flags that I didn't notice just because I was very blinded by infatuation. I couldn't really think clearly. I know it's hard because obviously like when you're in your first queer relationship, you want everything to go well, right? Like you want them to react and behave the perfectest way and you want to trust them fully. And so sometimes you give them the benefit of the doubt and sometimes they might abuse that. One thing I wish I knew is to tread a little bit lighter, let that person show that they are trustworthy without me just assuming that they are. Next question. So I'm with a guy right now, I'd consider myself pan, and I really like him, but in the back of my mind, I always saw myself ending up with a woman, and it's making me doubt everything. LOL, any advice? I know it's hard not to think about the future and like what might happen in the future, uh, but right now, if in the moment you really love this guy and love hanging out with him, and you see no reason to not be with him right now, then like, you don't have to think about like your potential, oh, but one day I might end up with a woman. Like it doesn't matter because right now is right now and you wanna make the most out of this present moment. So it doesn't really matter. Like even if you might end up with a woman in the future, you might not. You might end up with a man. You might end up with this well, guy. <laughs> in my experience, being worried and scared about the future and like what might happen in the future kind of ruins my relationship in the present. And I know this from personal experience, so yeah, that's my advice for that question. Next question, I've been in a relationship with a cis guy for five years, another cis guy right before for four years. I've known since like 2014 that I'm bi, but Caroni got me swinging more towards girls and non-binary people. Miss Rona is queer. Miss Rona is queer. <laughs> Miss Rona made a lot of people question their sexuality and gender identity. This is really fucking with my mind because I obviously care and love my current partner a lot and would have no problem spending the rest of my life with him. The thing is I'm really curious about kissing girls, relationships with girls, and gaining that experience. A few years ago I had this major crush on a non-binary AFAB person and I posed the question of opening the relationship up. But my current partner didn't want that. So I started the long process of releasing the crush. I now know that we would have made a terrible match because I thought they had other characteristics than they have, but the thought still tickles me, you know? So basically I don't know what to do. Help! Thank you. <sighs> this is indeed tricky. How urgent or how intense are the feelings of seeing other people? Is it kind of just a curiosity? Like, oh, maybe, oh, I kind of wonder what this would be like. Or is it a, I really need to do this for myself in order to grow and learn? Because sometimes you gotta explore those sides of yourself. And it's definitely very difficult to do that when you're in a relationship with a guy and he isn't okay with you kind of opening up the relationship. It's good that you've been like honest with him in the past, but part of me thinks that it might be stunting your growth and your self-discovery by staying with him. This is something that you obviously definitely have to decide for yourself. Like you can't just listen to my advice and like be like, okay, that's what I'm doing because Kira said so. <laughs> I want you to really think about your priorities right now. Are your priorities more leaning towards self-discovery and growth or are your priorities stability um, and being with the same person and having that that person to rely on and you might have other reasons that you wanna be with him. I would reassess your priorities and that could lead you to the answer. And maybe take a break with this person, explore, do your self-discovery and if that guy is right for you, you guys will get back together. Because I believe that the person you are meant to be with will show up and will come to you. But there could be a girl or a non-binary person that you're actually supposed to be with more that you can't let into your life until you make space for it. Food for thoughts. Oh, this is a great one. How do you approach your partner and ask them to take an STD test before having sex? I don't even know if people do that, but if they do, what if they take it the wrong way? Very fair. Personally, I think getting tested before you have sex with a new person is always a good thing. One way that you could maybe ease into this conversation is suggesting that you both go together. So it doesn't seem like you're being like, you dirty hoe, you need to go get an STI test. I'm fine. No, don't do that. <laughs> Be like, hey, why don't we go together, get tested, just so that we know if either of us 
are carrying an STI, we won't pass it on to each other and make it like a fun thing. And maybe you can like go out for dinner afterwards. I do think this is a really good idea. I have done this whenever I go into a new relationship and I also assess like how many people have I slept with in the meantime, like is there a possibility of, you know, have carrying an STI. And in the meantime, if you wanna have sex, just use protection. Next question, best thing you've done for your relationship, current or other? You're making queer think today. <laughs> okay, I know I probably sound like a broken record right now, but the best thing that I've done for my relationship is not being afraid to be vulnerable and telling them how I feel about everything, literally telling them about everything. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy and like that is a surefire way that you'll be on the same page and know where each other's heads are at. Talking about things, even if they're really scary to talk about, has honestly made our relationship stronger. So yeah, that's what I would say. And I didn't always do this in relationships because I was too scared. And I would just like keep things inside because like I didn't want them to think that I was thinking about these things, but like it's normal, we're human. And if you have a strong enough relationship, they're gonna love you and, and hear you out. How do I flirt with girls without them thinking I'm just complimenting them? And then in brackets you put, I look straight. <laughs> Vibes. <laughs> well, not anymore. Maybe I don't look straight anymore, but my whole life I had this issue. Well, okay. I think it's all about undertones. It's all about the underlying vibe of what you're saying. You could say the same two phrases, but have them sound completely different and have them have different implications. Let's say you wanted to say, you look so beautiful tonight. Let's say you wanna say that to the person you're flirting with. If you were saying this in a friendly manner, you'd be like, girl, you look so beautiful tonight. Oh my God. Kind of more like that, like in a more friendly way. But if you're saying it in like a flirty way, you really look into their eyes and be like, you look so beautiful tonight. Oh my God. I just like looked my tripod up and down. <laughs> hey there, sexy tripod. <laughs> Oh my God, why am I cringing right now at myself? I feel like saying things in like a lower voice, maybe saying things a bit quieter, maybe saying things in their ear. That is way more flirty than just being like, I love your dress, girl, where'd you get it, you know? How to not get jealous in a relationship. If you know the answer, you tell me. No, I'm joking. It's fine, jealousy is normal. Like you can't just, you can't just be like, no jealousy, not today. <laughs> Sometimes you can't help it and that's okay. To get over jealousy, you kind of have to get to a mental space of like, there is no one out there like me. So if my relationship is true, I don't need to worry about competition because there is no one else out there like me. I truly trust this person I'm with. I truly trust myself. I know that I'm worthy of being loved. I know that I'm worthy of a loyal relationship. And I feel like once you get to that place, you won't get as jealous, but it's still normal to get jealous once in a while and that's okay. But if your partner is like obviously doing things to make you jealous that are like low key red flags, like you might wanna reassess because I've been in situations where like I've been jealous, but like rightfully so because my partner was like obviously not being faithful to me. I hope that answers your question, but I just want you to know that being jealous, it's totally normal. You just don't want it to like consume you, you know? Like you don't want it to make you do things and like make you react out of that jealousy. How the hell do you do a long distance sexual relationship? Well, when you meet up, be prepared to be having sex 24 hours a day. <laughs> There are a lot of ways like you can connect intimately with your partner over FaceTime and that can be really exciting. But you just wanna make sure that like you trust your, your partner and they're not gonna like distribute your photos and videos to other people. It's really fun to do video call sex, phone sex, like while you're both like mutually masturbating or maybe like the other person is like telling you what they would do to you or even just like sending sexy pictures. That's pretty much the only thing you can do. And then once you finally meet up in person, your bed is gonna go off the frame. <laughs> Woo! 
What does it mean if you have a really low sex drive? This could mean a lot of things, but I don't want you to get scared and like overanalyze this because sometimes it happens. A lot of people just like don't have very high sex drives in general. That's normal. I feel like we need to normalize that. Um, not everyone has like a super high sex drive and wants to have sex every single day. So it doesn't have to mean anything, but I have been doing research on asexuality and I did recently learn that it is a spectrum. It's not, you know, black or white. You can still consider yourself a part of the asexual spectrum if you rarely have a sex drive. So maybe you sometimes do. Correct me if I'm wrong though. But yeah, I wanted to put that out there, but you do not need to label that. You don't need to label yourself, but if it, it does help a lot of people, so that's why I'm mentioning it. And also it could be that one, you're too young, two, you just simply have a low sex drive, three, there isn't anyone that really sparks that sexual desire in you, four, it could be that you're going through a lot right now, could be that you're struggling with mental illness, it could be that your mind is very preoccupied with other things. It could be from trauma, but don't worry, don't stress. Like if you don't have a sex drive right now, that's fine. You don't have to have sex right now. You don't have to masturbate. You don't have to do anything. Is it okay to date while figuring out your sexuality and gender? The way I think of it is, is that like you're attracted to who you're attracted to and if you're attracted to someone regardless of their gender you can date them you don't have to like know your sexuality first and then go on to date people like if you know that you like someone date them i like my ex and i think they like me can i ask them out or does that make me look desperate I just want to ask you, why did your relationship end? There must have been a reason why they're your ex and you're still not with them. Consider that when you want to get back together with them. Like if there were certain red flags that like you saw when you broke up with them and that's why you broke up with them, keep those in mind, you know, because they're still the same person and you don't want to like relive something that like you lived and you didn't like. I know it's hard. I know it's so hard. It's And it's so hard for me to say this too, but just try and think about what is going to fulfill you and what is going to be good for you. It's normal sometimes for relationships like to, you know, break off like that and go back together. And like, it doesn't mean that there was anything toxic, but like sometimes there is. And sometimes you just want to go back to someone because it's comfortable and it's familiar. So, just kind of ask yourself those questions. Like it's really hard for me to tell you get back with your ex or not because obviously I don't know your situation. But personally, if something broke off, it probably broke off for a reason. And if those things haven't been resolved, I don't see a point in getting back together with that person. Personally, take anything I say with a grain of salt. I'm just hoping to inspire or help at least one of you. But if you don't resonate with what I'm saying, that is completely okay. And you don't need to follow my advice if you don't want to. My best friend said she's straight but she acts so jealous when I talk about my crush how do I confront her and ask her what the real reason why she's so upset about it is <laughs> that's hard oh well she could just be in the closet and like too scared to come out yet she could just be jealous that like if you end up like dating your crush you could spend less time with her possibly and that might make her jealous but I feel like you already know by the way you worded this question what her intentions are I think you already know that she is queer and like she likes you but also like confronting her about it could make her really uncomfortable like maybe she's not ready to accept the fact that she maybe has a crush on you if she is your best friend I feel like you guys should be able to talk about anything again Communication is key. I'm gonna say that till the grave. Regardless of whether she actually likes you or she's just jealous in a friend way, just like reassure her that like, you're still gonna be spending time with her even if you go into a new relationship with your crush. Um, and just like reassure her that like she doesn't need to be jealous of like your time because if you value your relationship with your best friend, you're not gonna wanna lose that relationship, right? no matter if she likes you or not. I would start with that and be like, it's okay if you feel jealous, but I just want you to know that we're still gonna keep hanging out. And if she has a crush on you, then she'll have to deal with whatever happens if you end up dating someone else. And it's sad on her part, but you gotta do what's best for you, boo. How do I be sexy? I'm not very experienced and don't wanna learn everything from my partner. Totally get you. Totally get the anxiety in that being like, am I sexy enough? How do I like 
hold myself in a way that's gonna be like attractive. But honestly, I think what's truly sexy is confidence. So don't worry about trying to act like the girls do in porn or, you know, doing certain things because society tells you that it's sexy. True sexiness is confidence and self-love and just effortlessly being who you are proudly and fiercely. As long as you lead with that, you will learn along the way. You can ask friends for sex advice, like if you have any questions, if they are more experienced than you. But the most important thing is just knowing that you don't have to be perfect the first time you have sex. You don't have to be perfect any time that you have sex. All you have to do is communicate, make sure you get consent, make sure they get consent from you, and try and be in the moment as best as you can. I started having a crush on a girl, my first crush on a girl and I can't flirt for the life of me. <laughs> that is okay, honey. That is okay. Again, I feel like there is so much pressure from society to flirt perfectly or, you know, be charming or like be sexy. And like these pressures are not realistic and how people flirt in movies and online is not realistic. Don't worry about trying to flirt. Focus on having a good conversation to begin with. If you wanna compliment the person, compliment them, touch their arm, brush the hair out of their face. Little things like that when you feel it's right, but forcing it is not gonna work. So literally just like feel it out, feel out the vibes. Like if you're close in proximity to them, maybe like look down at their lips, you know, kind of giving them the indication that like you think they're hot and you wanna kiss them eventually. Putting your hand on their like leg, putting your arm around them, ask them questions. I feel like those are cute little flirty things you can do, but only do them if they feel right to you because you don't wanna like force anything. That's my biggest tip. Just by reading your guys' questions, I realized like how much pressure there still is to like perform properly or like perform good in relationships or in on dates. <sighs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Seriously, it's too much pressure. There's already so much pressure and, and, and nervousness about going on dates and about dating and about being in relationships that like, it's all too much, y'all. I don't play that way. I don't vibe with that. Being yourself is like the sexiest thing you can do. And if that person doesn't like it, they're not the person for you. If someone doesn't vibe with you, that's okay. You don't need to try and force it if it's not happening naturally. Let's see if we have any more questions. How do I tell the difference between attraction and gender envy? Oh, this is such a good question. I actually, a few people had this question too. It is even possible to have both at the same time. And that's when things get tricky. I feel like there's a difference between wanting to be like someone and wanting to be with someone. And sometimes those lines could cross because I have gender envy with like certain men. And it's more of like a, I want to look like them. I want to embody that person. Personally, I found that like when I have gender envy, it's usually like about the person's like physical appearance. And when I have like attraction, I'm usually attracted to like everything about them, like their personality. And like, I'm just like drawn to them and I want to be close to them. I want to hang out with them. I want to kiss them, maybe. But like, gender envy is like you don't necessarily want to be close to them you don't really necessarily want to like date them or kiss them it's just like you're really envious of like something about them and usually it's like a physical attribute all right y'all that is all i got for you today that was a great ask queer episode wow thank you again for sending in all these questions y'all are amazing if you want to participate in the next video like this make sure you go follow me on instagram keep an eye out for my stories because i always post a story with a little like question box. Again, I am not queer Jesus as much as I would like to call myself that. I don't know everything about your situation. So please take my advice with a grain of salt. And if you don't resonate with what I said, that is okay. So I hope that I helped at least one of you. Please let me know if I did. I would really, really love to know. And again, if you really liked this video and you want to see more, make sure you watch my first part to this video. I will link it below. I love you all so much. You are also valid and beautiful. Here's a hug.
just know that whatever you're going through right now, it's not gonna last forever. Nothing lasts forever. Take some time for yourself. Sit in silence with yourself. Try not to distract yourself every, every free moment in every idle moment that you get. There's so much information bombarding our brains in today's like era of social media and technology and news. And of course it's important to stay informed about what's going on in the world, but you also need to protect your energy. You don't need to be on the news, watching the news or on social media 24 seven. You have a special type of universal energy within you that if you just get quiet, and focus on that relationship with yourself, you're not gonna feel as anxious if you make this a daily habit. You are going to feel more grounded, more self-aware. Everything in your life is going to improve if you make self-love and self-care practices a daily ritual. Just putting that out there. That is all, I love you guys. I will see you in my next video. Mwah.